Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the differences between the Intel 1260p and the AMD 6800U versions of the GPU and Max 2. I go through a lot of different TDPs and the AMD 6800U version that I got in, I basically speed run, speed ran a bunch of benchmarks. I did 75 benches on one test to do different core counts. So I do dual, quad, and eight core benches across five to 30 watts. So that's 5 watt, 6 watt, 7 watt, 8 watt, 9 watt, all the way up to 30 watt in each different configuration. So we take a look at dual core, quad core, and 8 core configurations and try to get an idea of what's going on there. Additionally, we're going to be taking a look at a few different game benchmarks just to compare these two platforms and see just how much further the AMD 6800U version is. And we're also going to take a look at how there are still some problems with Intel's drivers and running some games, just having random problems where we're not having any problems on AMD's 6800U platform. So those are a few different things that we're going to be touching base on. We're going to go ahead and get into it just so we can create a baseline. So we have an understanding of what I'm running here. The screen is uber bright. So you're not going to be able to see this. I am running Windows 11 on both of these build 21 H2, the latest updates on all of them for the AMD platform. I am running their optional driver set, which is for it's 22.6.1. And on the Intel platform, I'm running the 1994 drivers. So latest on both of those, just, just so you can understand latest windows updates on windows 11, latest windows build latest drivers that are available to me in those versions that I just said, we're going to be taking a look at how core counts affect TDP in benches right now, the bench that I'm going to be doing, and there's going to be more of these, but again, this was 75 benches to get just this part took multiple hours just to get this data done. This is a very CPU bound test. So I am running heaven at 800 P and low settings. So I'm really kind of stressing the CPU here. It's kind of funny collapsing all this information, which took like 10 hours to do into like one image. So the blue dots represent dual core configurations on the 6800U, the red dots default configuration on 6800U, and the yellow dots represent quad core configuration on the 6800U. Now, if we take a look at the beginning segments, if we look at between five watt and 10 watt, just in this little column here, what's kind of counterintuitive to me, especially here in the CPU bound test that I'm doing here is that the default octo core, eight core arrangement is winning on all of them that we have a, a benefit running in the default eight core configuration as opposed to dual core or quad core which is a little bit odd i would have anticipated this being a little bit different especially with the quad core configuration i still want to kind of take a look at a six core configuration just because i want to kind of play with the numbers but if we take a look at this data set we can clearly see that from 5 to 15 watt the default eight core configuration is actually ideal. However, as soon as we start going over 15 watt into like 20 and 25 watt, quad core really starts helping us. And this is where we can start boosting frequencies more and we can actually start achieving higher frame rate. Uh, again, these are CPU bound tests that we're doing right now. So this is why quad core is kind of winning this and we're kind of reflecting what we're seeing is the difference in clocking going up in clock speed. So this is just a small data set sample. So don't run away with this information. I still have to do more tests yet. And again, I'm just trying to run and get these benches done as fast as I could because the GPU Win Max 2 goes on sale today. So uh, again, there's more tests to be done. But if we take a look at this data right now, it suggests going above 20 watt, you would be you would have a benefit running in a four core configuration as opposed to the eight core configuration. Now this will change depending on the game. If a game is not very multi-threaded like this heaven benchmark is, you're going to get a bigger benefit running in a quad core configuration. Obviously if a game can make use of multi-threadedness, you're going to want eight cores, but this is still interesting data to take a look at, but holistically, as you look at it, I would say doing dual core is not beneficial ever. Uh, quad core is beneficial uh, past 15 watt, but leaving the default eight core configuration is actually really worthwhile, kind of even throughout. It's really good at the low end and it's good at the high end. If we make this a GPU bound test, will the difference in power arrangement, if we kind of remove power from going to the eight core, will we be able to push more power to the GPU on the low end? So that's a test that I still have to do. So please stay tuned to that. That is going to be more of a comparison between the 6800U and the Steam Deck. So that'll be a whole other video itself. Now I want to get into like the meat and potatoes kind of stuff here. This is Arkham Knight running at 800p and low settings preset. And it's pretty much just domination on the AMD 6800U. This is just going to be a recurring theme. The 6800U just destroys 1260p. Intel came into this fight empty handed. 
And it's going to be even worse next year when AMD 7800U comes out, which will have Zen 4 and RDNA 3. Uh, bottom line here is more or less, if you're at 12 watt, you could run Bar Batman Arkham Knight at around 12 watt TDP, which is about mm, 20 watt total system power, which is about three hours on the GPD Win Max 2 with its 67 watt hour battery, just to give you an idea of what that would look like. Next, we're gonna be taking a look at Borderlands 3. The settings I used were 1920 by 1200. I am using a 50% rescale here and the low preset. And once again, uh, AMD is just clobbering everything here. This is kind of, again, a recurring thing. We can kind of start to get an idea of, we can start to get a feel for how these chips actually operate and you can start to see the difference. If you take a look in between the 10, 15, and 20 watt, you can see that there is a 60 frame rate threshold in there somewhere. And if you go in between 15 and 20 watt, you can see that there is a sweet spot of like 18 watt in terms of what is an efficient TDP for 6800U to run at. It really kind of shines very well at 18 watt, but even 12 watt is kind of a nice low end for running low resolution, high frame rate. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the Cyberpunk benchmark. Now, the only thing here that I, the minimum frame rates that I added here, they're pretty worthless. Like, I, I, there's no real reason I should have added these. The only thing that I kind of wanted to point out here is that on AMD, we had a consistent minimum frame rate regardless of TDP. However, on Intel's platform, as soon as we went to 20 watt TDP, that minimum frame rate uh, got a big boost. So there was less, there was less stutter on Intel's platform. Just kind of interesting data. Again, minimum frame rate isn't super helpful, but if we kind of take a look at this, there is something going on on Intel's platform where there is an advantage with less stutter. Outside of that, if we take a look at average frame rate and stuff, and again, I have video uh, gameplay of Cyberpunk playing at these settings, 1920 by 1200 with FSR performance, low quality preset, but using high textures, uh, you're able to hit 60 FPS at around 22 watt and it looks fantastic. And you can even see in the demo footage here. Next up, we're gonna be looking at Forza Horizon 5. This is 800p in the high preset. Once again, if we just take a look at the data, it is basically a similar story. You can kind of very easily understand that we're just gonna get double or better performance, especially at the low end. Uh, if we take a look at 10 watt here, a 400% increase, which is kind of absurd. And then at 15 watt, we have like a two uh, two times X increase. And then we're just basically a two X increase almost everywhere else. So even at the very low end TDP, we're like still very good at 10 watt TDP. You can actually go down a little bit lower if you wanted to target 30 FPS. And then you'd be sitting in a place where you could get, you know, four to five hours of battery life on the GPD WinMax 2. Otherwise you can get about two to three hours going at 60 FPS. Really cool settings. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Horizon Zero Dawn HZD. This is at 800p with the preset favor performance. And once again, we're looking at a seven times increase uh, in performance at 10 watt on both platforms. At 15 watt, we have a 4x increase. And then at 20 watt, it's a little bit over double. And then at 25 watt, this is where you're only going to see that double. So if you only were to look at benches that are only looking at 25 and 30 watt, it's going to still paint a big story but it doesn't paint the same type of story as when we take a look at forced low TDP, where it's just gigantically different. And then the last bench that we're going to be taking a look at to compare the difference between the Intel 1260p and AMD 6800U is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is running at 800p using DirectX 12, the lowest preset and no anti-aliasing. Once again, I don't have to repeat myself here. You can clearly see that AMD is just taking a gigantic lead over uh, Intel, Intel being red and blue here and AMD being gold and green. The last thing I wanna mention here is that these are all default configurations outside of saying on uh, PowerCFG.CPL, outside of using like high performance, I am not doing anything else on Intel's platform or on AMD's platform. I could help Intel's platform out tremendously if I were to tune EPP settings or any type of settings on Intel, I am looking at this from an end user's perspective of basically just picking up the device, setting a TDP and going. And if we do this, we actually have these results. The last thing that I wanna talk about here is even though AMD's Rembrandt platform is cartoonishly better in gaming benchmarks over Intel's Alder Lake platform, the one thing that I really wanna mention is that Intel's Alder Lake with their G GPU still needs a lot of work on the GPU side. 
Uh, even though I'm using the latest driver, I did have a problem loading Doom Eternal. Now, there are other games that just don't load or are broken on Intel's drivers, and you'll have to kind of play whack-a-mole with trying to go to different driver versions on Intel to like backport, go to an older driver just to run a specific game, or going to a newer driver. It can be problematic on top of just not having good performance. Whereas on AMD's platform, I literally just pushed start to go. Should be noted here that even on Arkham Knight, I had to patch the game to even get it to run on Intel's platform, where on AMD's platform, I just ran the game. So not only is it outlandishly better on AMD 6800U, it's easier and more convenient to play on AMD 6800U. Intel's platform will have better single threaded speeds. It's about 10 to 20% better. If that small area matters to you, both of these platforms will support eGPU. For me, I'm only gonna get the 6800U version. I know a lot of people are asking if you should get 16 gig or 32 gig. 16 gig is fine. You're, you, there's no there's no place that I can see that having more RAM will be beneficial from a gaming perspective. I'm getting it for productivity purposes. I am going to buy a 32 gigabyte RAM version for my work laptop and also gaming handheld. The GPU WinMax 2 is on Indiegogo right now. It'll be in the description field below. I barely squeaked by with this speed run to getting all these benches done. I would have, I wish I had more. I'm going to be following up with the 6800U, taking a look at the Steam Deck. We'll be able to compare it there as well. I'm also going to be taking a look at taking a look at configuration on uh, dual core, uh, six core, quad core, and eight core on the high end. Uh, a more GPU bound test. We'll take a look at that and see if we can free up any power there. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's a quick look at the difference between 1260p and AMD 6800U. We are also took a look at different core counts on CPU bound tests, GPU bound tests coming up soon. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.